Are you a brand new Foundry VTT player, or perhaps you're about to start playing in Foundry VTT, but you've never played it in before? Well, this video is for you because I'm going to be giving you a crash course on the basic player controls of Foundry VTT in 10 minutes. Hi there, my name is Fondu. I run this channel called Dice and Easy where I give you Foundry VTT tips and tricks, TTRPG general discussions, and daily TTRPG memes as YouTube shorts. So if any of that stuff interests you, hit that like and subscribe button down there. Before we get started with the tutorial, two disclaimers. Firstly, I am using Foundry VTT version 10, and secondly, I'm gonna have no modules installed. So if you're using a different version of Foundry, an older one that is, or newer one, depending on when you're watching this, or if you have some modules installed, your Foundry may look and behave in a different manner. And thirdly, I am using the D&D 5th edition game system, and I will be teaching the basics from D&D's perspective. So if you're playing another game, system, it's going to be a little bit different. All right, with that disclaimer out of the way, let me show you how to use Foundry VTT in 10 minutes. Start the timer. All right, we are now inside Foundry VTT. And the first time that you log in, you're going to see this little window over here. And the only thing that's really important here is selecting your character. So for me, it's Gary the Cleric. So I'm going to choose Gary the Cleric over here and click Save Configuration. Now, if you don't have a character there visible for you, don't worry, that's fine. Your character hasn't been set up yet in Foundry VTT. You just need to ask your DM to do that. And that association with your player account can be done later. And then probably one of the first things that you're going to want to find out is where can I find my character sheet and character? Well, that's simple. Let me just move my camera. You're going to want to go to the top right hand corner here where you see these little icons and pick the one with the little person over there. It says actors, click on that. And then you will find the registry with all of the actors. These are all of the characters in the game. So player characters, NPCs, etc. And here you should have your character added. Now, if there's no character here yet, then your GM will have to create an actor for you and assign it to you. Once that is there, you can go click your character to open the character sheet. Okay, now we have our character sheet open and this looks like a D&D 5th edition character sheet with a specific foundry layout. So on the left hand side, you can find your attributes, next to them all of your skills, at the top your hit points, hit dice, armor class, etc. And then there are these tabs over here where you can find your inventory, your class and racial features, spell book, etc. And probably one of the first things that you want to do is change your character image. Now players can't do this unfortunately, so you'll have to give the image to your DM and ask them to change it for you. Now that you know where to find your character sheet, your next question is probably going to be, how can I roll dice? Well, there is a few ways that we can do this. The easiest way is to just type in the chat over here at the bottom slash roll 1d20. And then it shows Gary the Cleric rolled an 11. That's probably the easiest way to do it in chat is type slash roll and then the amount of dice you want to roll, but that doesn't connect it to any of your attributes or skills or whatnot. So the more efficient way to do that is to go to your character sheet and then click on whatever you would like to roll. For example, if you want to roll a strength check, we click on strength, that opens this little pop-up that asks, is it an ability check or a saving throw? This time we're gonna go for an ability check. And then it's going to open another window asking, how do you want to make that roll? You're probably gonna to wanna to choose public, which means everyone can see it. And then whether it is with advantage, a normal roll or disadvantage. So we're gonna click normal. And now if we go down here to the chat, we can see that Gary the Cleric made a strength ability check, which rolled a D20 and added a plus one. This same method of rolling dice also works for all the skills here. You can click on them to roll as well. And it asks again this advantage, normal, disadvantage. Click on normal, then boom, we actually rolled a nat 20. That's pretty awesome. Anyway, that's how you roll your skills and abilities. If you want to roll an attack, you could manually type out the formula. It's pretty cumbersome. Or you just go to your inventory, go to the weapon of your choice. You see this little dice icon appears over the picture when you hover your mouse. Click there and then it will add a little pop up to the chat and here you will press the attack button to roll an attack roll, normal roll. And then if it hits, you can press the damage button to roll for a damage roll, which is a normal roll. And then boom, we have the roll to hit and the roll for damage. You can do the exact same thing for spells if you go to your spell book. And then for example, if we choose guiding bolt, we click the little dice icon over here. It's going to ask if we want to consume a spell slot and we're gonna choose yes and which level spell slot we're going to want to use. Cast spell. And same, the pop-up appears down here and we can use the attack and damage buttons to roll for 
hitting and rolling for damage. Now, one hint here is that you're going to want to open your character sheet a lot if you're rolling for the same things all the time. You can save some time with the hot bar down here. You can add macros here and you don't have to know how to do macros per se. You can just take, for example, Guiding Bolt, click and hold and drag it down here into one of the squares and boom, now we have Guiding Bolt down here and if we click it, it's going to go through the same process that we went before. Guiding Bolt got populated down here as you can see in the chat. And you can do the same also for weapons as well. So you can grab the mace over here, drag and drop it down there and boom you have a macro so now whenever you're doing a weapon attack or a specific spell that you like to use a lot you don't need to open your character sheet you can just click this little macro here and it will add the corresponding chat pop-up for you to use now let's talk about map controls for you as a player first of all you can move around the map with the right mouse button if you click and hold you can pan the map and then selecting is your left mouse click. You can only select your own tokens that you control. And then if you need to zoom in, scroll wheel up and down to zoom in if you want to see closer. And this is our character, Gary the Cleric. And on the left hand side, the top, you see your map controls. You have the select tokens control here for the token controls. Remember that if you're on another tool, like say the measure distance tool, and you try to select a character, it's not going to work. So make sure that when you're selecting your token, you are always in the select tokens tool. And then you have a select targets tool here. So you can click on, for example, this enemy over here, click select targets, and these target arrows appear around it so that you shows that what you're targeting. And then we have, as I said before, the measure distance tools. If you need to measure distances, you can just draw from a spot to see how far something is. And then if you want to move your token, you can simply just left click and hold to drag it and it will move to where you want. Or optionally, you can use the WASD keys to move around as well. Then let's talk about the two other tabs over here. So this is measurement controls. These are essentially measurement templates for you to measure out, for example, area of effect spells. So let's say we were to be casting Fireball, which is a circle spell, we can just have the circle tool chosen, then click, left click and drag and hold. And let's see, we need a 20 foot sphere there. We have a 20 foot sphere and now we can move it around, but with the left click to see which enemies we're going to hit depending on where our spell lands. Now, if you want to get rid of this, you just hover your mouse over it and hit the delete button on your keyboard and then you get rid of it easy. And there are other measurement types here like a cone, for, for example, Cone of Cold, you got a square and you got a straight line. These are just different measurement templates that you can use to measure whether your spell hits specific enemies in an area. Let's just get rid of these. Lastly, we have journal notes. Now this is mostly going to be on the GM's control because the GM has to add journal notes into a map if you would like to see them and then they're gonna be visible as little pins that you can open. But that's for the GM to add into a map if they want to. You can also toggle the notes display off if the pins are disturbing you on the battle map or whatever map you are on. And let's just go back to our token controls just to be sure that we can select our token. All right, let's look at combat then. So to initiate combat, the DM selects all of the tokens on the map that are gonna be part of the combat and then adds them to combat. The first thing that we're of course going to want to do is roll for initiative. There's two ways we can do this. We can double click on our token to open our character sheet and then go to the initiative number over here and click on the initiative title. That is going to ask us whether it's advantage, normal or disadvantage roll and then we can roll and boom, there we go. We rolled a 13. The other way that we can do this is by going to the combat tab. Let me just move my camera. So if we go to the top right over here, you see these two little swords? It says combat encounters. Once all of the characters have been added to the combat encounter, there's a little dice icon here that you can click that says roll initiative. If you click that, once again, it's going to ask you how you want to make that roll. Let's do it a normal roll. And now we can see that we got a 16 to roll. And of course the DM and other players will roll for their characters. So let me just quickly roll for the acolyte. All right, everyone has now rolled for their initiative we can see the initiatives over here and the GM has begun combat and now it is Gary's turn and when it's your turn you can move your token around you can target someone you can do your attacks and whatever you do and once you're done with everything that you want to do just go down here and you click end turn and then it gives the turn to the next person in the initiative order and that's it those are all of the simple controls for Foundry VTT for a player
And there you have it, the basic player controls for Foundry VTT in 10 minutes. At least I hope so. Let's see if we made it in 10 minutes or not. Was this video helpful for you? If so, leave a like and comment down there and send this video to any new players that you know so that they can learn the basics quickly. While you're also down there, I would appreciate a subscribe to the channel. All of those things that I just mentioned really help me out a lot, even if they seem like little things, they help this channel grow, and I really want this channel to grow and become bigger. On top of that, I also stream on twitch.tv slash diceandeasy every Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern European time, that is 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, where I talk about TTRPGs and go through VTTs and Foundry VTT as well, and also play some video games. I would love to see you over there. Link to that you can find in the description below. And on the screen right now, you're going to see another video of mine where I show you how to import your D&D character from D&D Beyond over to Foundry VTT. So if you're a new player and you would love to get your D&D Beyond character from D&D Beyond to Foundry VTT, watch this video and send it to your DM so that they can set up everything necessary for it. All right. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.